This is a beautiful piece of Jasper Arrowhead. It's pre-cut, pre-drilled. And we're gonna wrap it. It's got 20 gauge antique brass, or vintage brass, vintage bronze, whatever people call it, what they like. I'm gonna get about four feet of it. Always good to have too much rather than too little if you're gonna use one piece. Now, let's put it through. Get it to the very midway point. Decide which side you want to be the front. Crimp it. Twist it. Twist it again. Make a loop. Come around the back. Make sure your loop is a good size you want. It's gonna be the top to attach it. I'm gonna thread it through this little crevice here. It's the part where it would attach to the arrow. Wrap sinew around it back in the day, make it you can do a nice arrow, kill a buffalo, shoot your enemy. You can still use it for that purpose. Once it's on your neck, you just take it off, stick it on a stick. Someone comes at you, bam, arrowhead. It's a necklace and a weapon. It's everything you ever wanted. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing these decorations here. I like to do the double, double thread. That's something that's fun. You got to put a lot of pressure as you're coming around. Keep pressing it against the stone. Press it against the stone. You want it super tight. I'm gonna twist it back, twist it forward. There's no rules. There's no rules. The only rules are no rules. There actually are three rules of wire wrapping. First rule is make sure it holds a piece, make sure the piece doesn't fall out. Second rule is Make sure you tuck in your sharp edges. There's always at least two sharp edges. You get one piece of wire, you got two sharp edges. Tuck them in so they will never come out by accident. Scratch someone. Third rule of wire wrapping is we do not talk about wire right now. Third rule is keep everything tight. You do not want anything sticking out that will snag. Make your jewelry snag proof. It doesn't have to be indestructible. It doesn't have to be where someone can't grab it and attack it with a hammer and undo it. But see, I didn't get to the total middle, so we got these two sides sticking out. It does have to be strong enough that for normal wear and tear, your piece is not going to come unraveled for suddenly for no reason. just because you weren't careful enough to make it tight. See how tight that is? So I'm coming around the back, I'm coming up the top, and I'm gonna do what I call scarfing it. Get this in the middle. Just come around, pretend this little loop at the top is somebody's face, wrap the scarf around. Wrap the scarf around. As many times as you want. I don't wanna go so high, it looks like it's coming over their mouth. But put it around a few times, looks pretty cool. Move the back, get your cutters, cut just enough to tuck those sharp edges. Tuck them in. Tucking sharp edges is like people's least favorite thing sometimes, depending how you set yourself up. I'm going to give this a little crimp here. People hate doing it. People would always ask me, can, can you dug in my sharp edges? No, you gotta learn how to do it yourself. So don't bring me none of that crap, tuck in your sharp edges. You tuck in your own sharp edges. Here's our finished piece, not bad. This is a little off. Let's give that a little bit of a, get that a little more centered. All right, there we go, bam. Let's pause for a second and get our leather. Two millimeter round wax leather. This is dark brown. You can get black. You can get any color you want. I'm going to give myself about uh, 20, 24 inches. Just enough. Make a nice necklace fit over a decent large sky if he wants. 24. These are called spring closures. 
voila. First you want to take this little part here and I always like to bend it in like this. That way the cord doesn't come all the way through, it stops and you're actually tucking a sharp edge. Next one, you get some super glue. Super glue the um, any artistic crafty person. Dollar store super glue, get the gel kind. The green top. Don't get the red top, that's watery. Stuff will get all over your hands. A tiny dab in there. One end in. Crimp it. Crimp the very edge. Squeeze it tight. Boom. Not sucker's not coming out ever. Now we're gonna put some wooden beads on there. Stick the arrowhead on, then we're pretty much done. Get some jump rings, get a little a lobster clasp on the end, boom. Get yourself a nice bead reamer. Some of these wooden beads, the holes are crap, especially if you want two millimeters to go through there. Gotta really get those holes opened up. Now we got our beads on there. You only put one closure on first, and then you get your beads on, and you put your other closure on. Now you figure out where the middle is, separate it, take your jump rings, stick it on. You know how to do this. Always close jump rings completely. Make sure you kind of wiggle them in, make sure they're super exactly where you want them to be. I don't like these jump rings, they're a little bit flimsy, but whatever. Put on a whole bunch of them, makes it strong. Also, you put on more jump rings, you keep the piece from spinning so it faces forward. I like to put on like five on one of these pieces. Gives it a nicer look too, kind of mirrors that little uh, scarf thing we got going on. So, and if you can't find these closures right away, not a big deal, just tie a freaking knot. Super glue it, you're good. Cut off the ends. And now we want this, uh, you want these beads to not slide up and down like this. A number of ways you can do it is stick some super glue right in the edges. But, or I like to just do this. Bring it to the middle. Pull these two guys together. Make sure the arrowhead's right in the middle. And tie a big old knot on each end. There you go. Make sure the knot's tight up against there, don't go too crazy. And then press this side up against the knot, tie your other knot. Don't let the knot tell you where it wants to go, you tell the knot where the freak you want it to go. There we go. And Put on the lobster clasp, close it up, and you're done. I always tell people, are you right-handed, left-handed? If you're right-handed, most people, one out of, nine out of ten are right-handed. So you put the lobster clasp on the side so you know it'll always face forward when they put it on. Just, just little things like that people appreciate. Keeps it from getting confusing. Throw a few jump rings on the end, make it easier to grasp. Sometimes you can put like seven or eight jump rings, make it a little bit adjustable. They can clasp it to the one they want, it's kind of change the size, and bam. This is not the freaking coolest arrowhead necklace you've ever seen. Yeah, come on, come on. Take it off if you need to fight someone. I